Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're starting to tighten the screws a little bit in our own bags for the season, Matty Boy, trying to figure out what are going to take the final few places. Mm -hmm. We've chatted a little bit in some of the Q&As about some of the maybe, uh, the spots that are maybe up for grabs. Yeah. Uh, we're going to look at your wedges today. Yeah, I think I liked my Mizuno wedges last year. Mm -hmm. No complaints about them. Um, I kind of just want to mix it up a little bit. I think my wedge game is a little bit off and on. Um, so I, I just kind of feel, it's kind of for me like a bit like a putter. Yeah. Like I know you fit those really well to me. I'm not doubting the way they were fit or anything. It's just almost like I want to work more on my short game this year. I want to work more on my putting. I kind of want to start with something a little bit fresh, mm -hmm. a little bit new, and just give like, you know, just kind of hit reset on the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, not a bad idea at all. I think wedges is, is like you say, putt, like the putter, ones that you can maybe replace a little bit more often. Yeah. You know, they will wear down the, the amount of uh, wear and tear that they take being in bunkers and, and obviously the amount of shots that we hit during the short game. And especially with those ones being forged, I did chip quite a bit last yeah. year around the, the practice green. So, they, I mean, they're not worn out, but certainly yeah. a fresh set of grooves wouldn't, wouldn't do me any disservice. And, and also as a longer player, mm. you're going to hit a lot more of them. Yeah, true. So, you true. know, you're going to wear them down and they are of utmost importance because really most days your, your game will probably be, you know, made or, or oh, totally. broken on, on the, the, the kind of weight or, or the performance in your wedges. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to start off, um, we've got we've grabbed three companies uh, immediately that have kind of caught your eye. We had a little kind of look through the bags together. Mm we'll establish kind of what we did and didn't like. So of all the companies that we have options of, of fitting to here, we've narrowed it down to three. Yeah. Right, so we've got Titleist, you've had in the past, you liked your SM7s, I believe it was. I think it was, it was a set of SM7s, yep. yeah. Um, we have some Callaway. Yep. Jaws wedges. I've always liked the look of those Jaws wedges. I know we included them in my fit last time mm -hmm. and they probably would have been close to something yep. I would play for sure. And uh, probably the, the leading candidate to, to this point is um, the Cleveland Zip Core. Yeah, so I, um, Strix on Cleveland was nice to both of us. We got a demo set last year at some yep. point. So I remember playing a couple rounds with them, just stock ones, and I really liked them. And to be honest, when it comes to like an address position, yeah. they're probably the best looking ones at address, just to my eyes. You so like that. I've got my eye on those, but if it turns out the other yep. two give me much better numbers, I'm, I'm definitely open to something else. You would have loved the opportunity at the Tour Racks? Yes. Hopefully next year, Strix on Cleveland. Don't forget about us. Don't forget about us lefties. Don't forget about the rest of us. Yeah, I would have. You would have liked them. Because that was one thing we were looking at there. Oh, well maybe, do, you know, we'll do, obviously, do, we'll do some grind work for you. I was going to say, Mikey know. can do a little we can TXG that, yeah. custom shop treatment. We sure. can, we yeah. can. Um, but it's always nicer to do any grind work with a raw wedge rather than a plated wedge. Totally. Um, I still think it's a great program. I'm not trying to it's a great make program. it a downer. But we, I would love to have the yeah. options for lefties. Yeah. We have some here. and. Uh, we have actually, we, we can't talk about it yet, but it's in the pipeline of some new versions of those Ooh, that are coming. Nice. Um, so they're really nice. Um, so what didn't make the, the, the cut tail mid wedges for you was, was a no-no. I, I just don't love how they look at a dress. I yeah. liked the high toe for a period of time, yep. but I do make some three-quarter to full-ish swings with my 60, and mm. it just never quite got along with it. Okay. Um, nothing against like the MG wedges. I don't hate them, but mm -hmm. they're just not for my eye, not my favorite. Right. Um, ping wedges are probably the same. Like I know they perform really well, but as I said to you, like I might as well be a little bit picky. Yeah. I don't need to test seven, eight different brands of wedges. And these are more the ones that I think from a dress, I just really like the look of. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of new wedges in the pipeline, uh, specifically the new ping, uh, the, yeah. the Glide Forged Pro. Yeah. Uh, we've seen some of those appearing in some tour bags. Uh, they look really nice. Definitely. Kind of a very similar look to something like um, like your old ones, actually the Mizuno T20 yes. with that uh, with that kind of meteor mm. top line, move that CG up a little bit, and move it optimally into the right spot for wedges. Probably a little bit of a um, a varying CG position from right. the, the the kind of gap wedge through to the lob wedge. I'm sure we'll test those when they come out we, too. We will, yeah. we will, um, and I'm sure they would kind of be of a, a, a comfortable shape for you. I think so too. But yeah. we're going to start with these three and uh, and go from there. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. We picked the lovely uh, the lovely Kings Barnes. I like this a lot. Number thirteen. So we've moved up to the front deck, um, so we can kind of take advantage of a, a specific yardage. Uh, we're going to hit some comfortable. Some comfortable little 60s. Perfect. Guys, when it comes to wedge fitting, you can kind of go at it any which way you want. One of the first things you want to do is have a player hit their pitching wedge, baseline some distances. Right. 
Um, obviously thinking about the rest of the bag and how that composition is going to come together to create 14 clubs. It, should you need 14 clubs? Not everyone needs 14 clubs. True. Um, so either you, you can start either way. You can either start with the most versatility, uh, which is in the, 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 the lob wedges, sand wedges, most grind options, most bounce options, all that right. sort of stuff. That's where we're going to start today. And you know my yardages really well. So like you don't need to see me hit pitching wedge. It's a 140 club. Yeah. Um, you know the spin rates on it. So I like this idea. So we'll start with the highest loft of wedge instead. Yes. Love it. Opener. It's a little downhill, so that might fly a bit past it, but that's the yeah. We would there. expect that. And what we can do is, is <clears throat> you know, beauty of using GC quad is we have a, an adjusted nine foot two downhill. Of you can course. look on your quad and see what the flat yardage is. So, what was that? That was a hundred. I hit it a okay. bit hard. So, yeah. so that's... four. So basically, we we're getting four yards of gain from the downhill. It's a bit more like a kind of a round speed. I would try to hit that. That was a bit heavy, but to try to hit it around 95 yards. That's a nice one. Yeah, so 97 was the adjusted carry. That's a pretty standard, like I'd be really happy with that flight on that one. Feels good. All right, Matty boy. Um, so taking a little look at how those first few have came out. Yeah, a fraction high in the, the launch. Tons of spin, obviously. That's never an issue for you. You've got so much club head speed. That's, that's never really an issue. Mm. And not overly steep on, uh, on those ones. Probably one of the reasons it's, uh, it's exiting a fraction on the higher side. I think if we were in more the six to eight degrees downward, right. you know, we'd probably see that exit a little bit on the lower side. Striking it slightly below the CG on kind of groove three, which is about ideal. Right, yeah, I see um, some wear marks there. Yep, yep, start to see some, uh, some of that. So just briefly, just so mm. I can uh, see a couple of things, I'm gonna take in a little bit tighter to the green here and just watch a couple. Of, I wanna see how you use the sole on this. Sure. So as I start to decide what, what uh, grind we wanna pick on. Good. And guys, if, if you're ever going for a wedge fit or, or fitters, if you're ever doing a wedge fit, I never really like to see a player hit a full shot with a lob wedge. Mm. Doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's a high value on the golf course of doing it either. Uh, I think once you get down to sand wedge, you probably want to see them hit at about 90%. Mm. So, so even if we said lob wedge, 75% of your speed, sand wedge, no more than 90% of your speed, like, yeah. you know, around there and then never making a full swing uh, until you get to gap wedge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you're always swinging within yourself. I think your accuracy would be a lot better. I started doing that a lot more last year. Like with that shot I was hitting at the beginning, that would only be really if I had to stop the ball super quick, like yeah. probably a one out of 10 times. But for the most part, I'd rather take the middle lofted wedge and make that 75% swing. Love it, love it. Definitely uh, applying some uh, Rafluski technique here. Trying there's, to. There's, it's pretty shallow. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm hearing, even though that's three and a half uh, degrees down, mm. I'm, I'm hearing contact slightly prior to impact. I'm hearing ground contact before ball contact. Yeah, I've been getting that for sure. A little bit of that. Yeah. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? Mm. You know, that's, that's something that, that actually uh, a lot of, Sort of chipping instructors will, will encourage that. I'm trying not to lean the shaft so much and try to pick the ball as much. I, th I think I got into that trap a lot yeah. over the years. So I'm trying to get a little bit more, yeah, just try to deliver a little bit more loft at it. Yeah. And I think for that reason, it probably is a bit shallower. Um, what, do you like to, what do you like to use, you know, a basic nothing in front of you pitch shot like this? What do you, is it a 60 that you try and kind of flight in with a little bit of spin? Generally, I've been using 60, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to learn a couple different shots where I'll chip the gap wedge, but yeah. I usually only do that if it's like a way uphill pin, because mm -hmm. I'll tend to leave this short. But if it's dead flat like this, I think a standard 30 yard shot, I would use this. Okay. Yeah. That was lovely. Really nice. That was that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, that's better. That was contact. really nice. Turf conditions at your home course, Cedarbrae. 
Probably for the most part of the summer, they're pretty kind of mid. Yeah, not, not as I was going to say, not too firm, not too soft. Not really. Yeah. It would take a, a weather kind of extreme. So if yeah. we had a dry patch, sure, you can get it a little bit dry. But for the most part, they're, you know, it's a little bit soft, but not mucky down there right. ever. I mean, we would generally say lob wedge, high bounce is 12 to 14, mid mm. bounce is, you know, 8 to 10, low bounce is 4 to 6, right? Yes. You know, those three sort of numbers. So we're going to be in the, about the 10 category here for you. I think so. Shaft is reasonably vertical Im right. at uh, impact. I mean, dynamic loft, we were about 52 degrees of dynamic loft in those last couple. Uh, so you've got lots of, lots of loft still on there. We don't have to protect you from too much lean right. or also too much backward lean. Yeah. You know, so we, we, we can be very general with you here. And the sand at most courses I play is, again, it's not overly soft. Yeah. It's not overly firm. It just right. it fits that mid description pretty well. I like well. it. I like it. Okay. Let's go to Voki, uh, same thing. We'll go back there. Actually felt really nice. Go ahead. Oh, come Would have had to play them. <laughs> <laughs> A little toey. Flew okay though. Nice. I feel like I'm making better contact with these. Yeah, so user experience, you know, this is this is giving you a little bit uh, more what is it more cl more clean contact, Maybe. a little Maybe. less turf. I think I'm feeling a bit less turf coming okay. through it. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but I've hit four out of five, I feel like I hit very centered. So it is a bit lower in flight. Yeah, it's, it's coming out at a slightly lower window from the launch angle. I, I'm happier with that, if I'm being honest. I do like that. Um, I kind of felt like I popped the zip core up a bit, maybe, mm -hmm. with the same swing. 100 RPMs of difference. And actually, I mean, really, probably the first one, you spun a little bit in the low side. If we mm. disable one of those four, um, look at the other three, we would be identical. Yeah. Good. We a bit skinny? Yeah. I kind of felt like the one prior I had, I, like I had to hang on to it, I almost lost it like long right. So we're seeing less, we're seeing more spin. Mm. Uh, we have two degrees more bounce. Okay. The bounce could be leading us to a slightly lower strike, which is tilting the launch down, increasing the spin, just a little gearing for mm, us. Good point. Um, so we just need to be a little mindful of that. Gotcha. We don't want to uh, start to see variance in ball speeds. Your highest at 84, your lowest now at 79. So right. see that standard deviation move around a little bit. That was nice. That one felt good. It's spinning more. You're not, you're not off at all. It's 12,000 all three times. Interesting. I see what you're saying though about the strike location. So if that extra bounce is moving, it probably a groove lower consistently. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that the wedge is you know spinning more on its own, but that feature of it maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, what we what we do know from wedges is everyone is governed by the same set of rules. Right. When it comes to the groove, when it comes to the the friction between the groove, the milling, the roughness, um, all that sort of stuff. Really, everyone's playing in the same the same ballpark when it right. comes to that. So this comes down to a little bit more of the fitting um, component of things like bounce and uh, that, that sort of stuff. So you know, we would be then looking to you to say, do you want more spin mm. from your, your 60? Is that something you'd like to have as, as an option, a little bit more stopping power? Because this is yeah. offering you, you know, a reasonable amount. If we look at the average right now, it's, it's offering you about a thousand, thousand more. I mean, I would say it wouldn't have been what I would come into a fit looking for, no. Yeah. No, I like it for the idea of like a specialty shot, but to be honest with you, like um, even the Mizuno one, which I think spins enough, it's not a super high spinning wedge. I had a couple 50 yard pitch shots with it from the fairway and mm -hmm. they stopped dead. So probably not. I don't think, I wouldn't be saying, yes, give me more spin. It's not, not my number one kind of thing, I don't think. So let's, let's go and hit some little partials with this one now. Okay. 
start to learn a little bit more about that that bounce. So, mm. you know, we can influence the, the the vertical contact, but when it comes to this type of shot, you you'll have less forward shaft lean, and we actually start to expose a little bit more of these sole characteristics. I felt a bit of turf kind of, I I, it sort it, of bounced yeah. into that one a little bit. So a wee bit more nippy there. Go in. Definitely has some serious spin on it from that yardage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot. Seven, sixty, nine hundred from like really I'm just, a thirty-yard carry, thirty-two-yard carry is a lot of spin. I don't feel like I'm making as good contact with these. Okay, that's the only thing I would say. I like the flight of a lot of them, but I just I, it's kind of what you said at the beginning. I wonder if when I thin one a bit versus when I kind of strike mm -hmm. one a bit higher, yeah, yeah. that ten-yard gap that kind of mm -hmm. popped up maybe wasn't ideal. Right. Yeah, it all comes down to what do you what do you want? What do you need more of? Um, you know, somebody might look at this and go, well, I actually could, I could benefit from taking a, a lower spin ball with my irons and, yeah. and you know, benefit from a left dash Pro V1X off the, off the tee. Maybe I'll play in a, a wedge that spins a little bit more and gives me high wedge spin still, mm -hmm. but I get off the tee benefits. I mean, it just, it's all about how, you, how your perspective is and Definitely. what do you want to do? That was nice. Go in. That's in. Oh. Left tell you what, device. that's spinning plenty as well. I mean, it's, yep, it's good, isn't it? That was nice. Yeah, I kind of like how these are coming out. That was lovely. Are we are we ruling out any of these to this point? Are we are we not continuing with any of these three? Or are we still all three? Are, st are they still? All I'd like in to play? see how the mid flight okay. wedge goes with them. Yeah. Sand wedge time. Generally speaking, we go up and bounce when it mm. comes to sand wedges. Lob wedges, we tend to open the most, so we would start with a little bit less, knowing that when we open it, we add some. Um, we tend to play sand wedges up with a little bit more of a square face right. or a slightly longer bunker shot. Yes. So, you know, again, we need a little bit more bounce in, in most of those scenarios. Um, we have a 54 10 here that's bent to 55 11. Nice. Yeah, they are coming out nicely. Okay, so constantly making little refinements as we go. Just mm. saw a couple sneak a little on the right side, knowing that you do generally do a little better with flatter clubs. I've, I've just nudged this a little on the flat side. Nice. Um, should take away that long right one. That's nice. That's nice, that one. Ideal. Got a chance. Ooh. Nice. Hmm. Yeah, zip. So the Vokey actually spun quite a lot more in the sandwich. So it's funny, I was looking at these at yeah, low tens and thought it was at spinning low, but this the Cleveland was the same. It's the yeah. Vokey that actually Vokey spun. Vokey actually had a little bit more. Interesting. I don't mind that like with the with the middle wedge. I certainly wouldn't mind that because, again, mm -hmm. I, I play quite a few partial shots with that. So <clears> to keep the spin on it is probably a good thing. Okay. Okay, so are we, are we keen of getting to the point where we're narrowing it, we're narrowing it so. a little bit? Yeah, I think I, I don't mind these Callaways, but it's funny, like the other one with the higher bounce, I feel like it was kind of giving me too much bottom contact. Yeah. Funny enough, this one does have higher bounce again, but I'm getting a little bit less spin yeah. with it. I think I'm just not quite as consistent with it. I like the look of them. I just don't think they're suiting me. Okay. So, kind of narrowing it down, the, the, out of the, the lob wedge test, the sand wedge test, you, you kind of lean towards Vokey. Yep. When it comes to gap wedges and pitching wedges, really full, full sole is our only option. Yeah. F grind from, uh, from Vokey. So, 
not really much of a a decision to be made no. amongst brands because there's not much variability there. Gotcha. And it's, as a, you've said, it's mostly a full swing club. I'll yeah. hit a few chip shots with it, but <clears> I certainly don't need anything crazy with the soil. Right. So this is, yeah, more about meeting the, the kind of target yardage here, which would be normalized about 125 on yes. here is going to be about 127. Perfect. Nice. Like that. Good. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Dancing around the cup here, Matty boy. These are nice. I mean, it's kind of hard to argue with. I'm not looking forward to hearing why are you playing 14 titles clubs in the comments, but I don't know. It just, I was going to ask you, like, obviously there's technical parts of wedge fitting. You and I have done this a million times together already. You know my swing pretty well. But at a certain point, like, you have to just hit some shots, see what you make the best contact with, see what suits your eye, and see how the start lines are. And this is kind of just... Yeah. part of the process these these golf clubs may as well be called a b and c it doesn't matter yeah. it doesn't matter no makes no makes absolutely zero difference we're, we're picking them based on f looks feel mm. playing characteristics uh data all, all of the above they're all good every, every single one of these is totally. good it's, it's, it's fine fine margins and, and we're really we're leaning on um, some some tightness of the data, yeah. but a lot on you, your your own user feedback. Totally, yeah. And I think I've come into it going, I need to not put three more Titleist clubs in the bag, just for like the purposes of the channel. We've had these conversations, mm -hmm. like let's try to keep the bags kind of mixed yeah. up so we get a, a piece of each. So I think coming into it almost like trying not to end up with Vokies, I think it's proven that they do really suit me well because even despite that bit of bias, I can't argue with it. I'm hitting them no. way better, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. We, we came in thinking it was going to be probably um, probably Cleveland. That was the one eye. you liked the look of. You kept picking that one out for the last couple of months. Uh, Callaway, you thought were quite nice. Yeah. And, and always interested in seeing what Voki does. Definitely. That so, was kind of the, the, the start of the fit. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think it was, uh, no, I don't think anyone could say that you've leaned away from performance mm. into a brand. No, definitely not. You know, you, you've definitely not done that. So, okay. Three new Vokey wedges. Three new Vokey wedges. Yeah. <laughs> shaft wise, we've uh, we've been using just the standard Vokey shaft. Uh, you use your X sevens. Um, what did you have in the the Mizunos? I have S fours right now. I think they're S four hundred. Yeah, Mikey put S four hundred tour issues in these. Nice. So more of a weight thing. Um, yeah. How how were they for you? I mean, they feel they do feel pretty stiff for a wedge. Yeah. I wouldn't hate going with something a little bit softer, maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I know you were mentioning to me like you, you're rethinking a little bit whether you go with the heavy flex and the wedges. I would definitely be open to yeah, yeah. doing something that, that maybe comes down a couple grams. Let's, let's do this. Let's get the heads that worked great today mm. and let's delve into shafts a little bit more sure. and, and build up some stuff and I'd let's have to. some fun with that because those, those those times when you question yourself come from having conversations with people you respect mm. highly, you know, your peers. Yeah. So when, when Gareth and I were chatting about, um, you know, wedges and, and some of his research and doing some of it ourselves, I'm not convinced that going heavy, heavy, heavy is, is the only way to do it. Right. I think for a lot of people it's, it's good and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, the less force you put into it, I'm not sure you want to be given the heaviest option in your bag to do that with. I agree with you. And I think now that I'm not going hard at wedges now, I'm trying yeah. to hit them a bit more three quarters. I think maybe something that isn't as heavy and as stiff might actually suit me better. That might be part of what I enjoyed about these. Yeah. Um, and all three had a lighter shaft than what mm -hmm. I play in them. And I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I felt so okay. Maybe we just do that, just what you said. We do a little follow up. I think people would yeah. enjoy watching that too. It would be a good experiment. It definitely, definitely would. Okay, um, some Vokies for Matty Boy. Um, <laughs> It is the way that it is. It just hey. the, that's the way the cookie crumbled today. Definitely. Um, you're, you, neither or none of the brands you were going to make a bad choice with at no. all. I, I think I would have been happy with all three of them. I just, the level of consistency I found with those, I think I'll 
help me on the course for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And more wedge tests and uh, wedge shaft testing to come. Definitely. Yeah. Good. Okay. Stay tuned for that, guys. We will see you again soon.